Question 4a. Calcium carbonate decomposed on heating. This is the equation. So from here, you should know that uh, it's an endothermic uh, reaction because uh, decomposition requires uh, energy. So energy need to be uh, supplied in order to uh, decompose the compound. So therefore, the delta H must be positive. So we're going to use that uh, later. Um, table 4.1 shows the values of the Gibbs energy uh, with the temperatures. So as you can see, when temperature increases from 1050 to 1176, so you will see the Gibbs energy is become more exo. So from 9.9 .9 to negative 10.3. So this one is telling us that the reaction is more feasible when the temperature increases. So this is the information. So of course, this is the decomposition reaction. That's why when we increase the temperature, so it will be easier to happen, means it's more feasible. Okay, assume the uh, enthalpy and the entropy they are uh, constant uh, over this uh, temperature range. So try to plot uh, the Gibbs uh, versus the temperature in Kelvin. So use all the values here uh, to plot the, the graph. Um, this is not really a, a proper graph, so you, you can uh, just uh, plot it according to the values and you get this uh, this line right so now for part two calculate the gradient of your graph determines the entropy in joule per kelvin per mole for this reaction show your working after you plot you can use your own line and get the gradient so for me i took uh, two coordinates from the graphs okay this one uh, again you can get your own coordinates for the calculation right so now the gradients uh, after we use uh, the delta y over delta x so uh, you will get uh, uh, close to this value so the gradient is negative uh, 0 0.15 something or 16 something uh, joule per kelvin per mole so as you can see from this uh, Gibbs uh, equation so delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S because this graph is the uh, Gibbs versus the temperature so therefore we know that the negative delta S is the gradient because it's Gibbs versus T so negative delta S is the gradient so negative delta S is equal to this value so we know that it's going to be 156.25 joule per kelvin per mole remember this gradient must times thousand because we need to convert kilojoule to joule right so you get uh, roughly 156 or 15 something or 16 something depends on your graphs For the part B, group 1 hydrogen carbonate, so the M here is a group 1, with the hydrogen carbonate uh, decomposed on heating to give uh, metal carbonate, CO2, and water vapor. So from this statement, try to construct an ionic equation for the decomposition of hydrogen carbonate ion. First, for the hydrogen carbonate ion, you must know it's HCO3 negative. So it's from the, this uh, formula. So this hydrogen carbonate ion uh, will decompose this to these three. Carbonate, CO2, and water vapor. So what you need to do is just to construct this. Hydrogen carbonate ion form carbonate ion, CO2, and H2O. And you just balance it. Part 2. 
the thermal stability of group 1 hydrogen carbonates increases down the group so means uh, it's getting more stable uh, or more thermally stable uh, when it's down the uh, this group 1 so means it's harder to break means it's harder to decompose so what is the reason because the hydrogen carbonates they are all the same when down group 1 so the changes is actually the size of the group 1 cation so I just use two cations uh, for the explanation let's say it's a lithium ion and the cesium ion so it's group 1 when it's down the group we know that the charge is the same because the same group but the size is different so we know that cesium is has more electron shell so it's larger uh, therefore the distortion is not there means the polarizing power of cesium is not as good as lithium so we know that the composition of the salt or especially carbonate salt it need to base on the polarizing power of the cation when the size of the cation is smaller and the charge is the same we know that the charge density of lithium let's say lithium it's much powerful or much greater so therefore it can distort the carbonate uh, hydrogen's carbonate ion and eventually it can weaken the bonding uh, so this is what happened uh, for this uh, thermal stability okay the first thing that you need to explain is the size so you must mention ionic radius so ionic radius of the group 1 cation increases down the group or you can say it has more electron shells and so on so after that you need to relate with the charge density so what is charge density means uh, the, nu the numbers of charge uh, uh, for the given volume means the volume now this for this lithium is smaller is charge uh, post, uh, positive one or one positive so therefore we know that the charge density of this lithium is greater so it can distort let's say now we have an ion so it can distort the anion more and it can break the CO bond easily so this one is about charge density it means greater charge density it can polarize or distort the hydrogen's carbonate ion easier so now the charge density decreases down the group and we know that cesium now is larger in size charge density is lesser so it's less able to distort the carb hydrogen's carbonate ion so when the distortion is lesser or polarization is lesser so the co bond inside the hydrogen's carbonate is not weakened or is uh, less weakened when it's less weakened means it's harder to decompose and distort uh, that's the meaning so therefore these are the things that you must uh, be able to mention right for the decomposition or thermal stability part c the buffer system in seawater contains the hydrogen carbonate and the carbonic acid so this is the equilibrium uh, so the acid with the h2o form hydrogen carbonate and the hydronium ion part one define a buffer solution uh, buffer this one no choice you must uh, of course memorize uh, so it's a solution which resists the change in ph when a small amount of, of the acids and alkalines added means a small amount of acid and alkaline it won't change the ph of the solution uh, that's a buffer ability of buffer is to resist the change in ph when a small amount of acid or alkaline is added now part two this is a very important uh, concept you must know when you try to construct the equations for the buffer solution you must use the buffer species 
because it's already given in equilibrium five, the acid and the salts, okay, is the uh, carbonic acid and the hydrogen's carbonate ion. So this is acid, and of course this is the salt. So means the two equations you must use these two species. Now, if let's say the acid or extra acid added to the buffer means the H plus is going to be more. So how the buffer to remove the hydrogen's ions that added? So it must use the salt. So the salt in the buffer now is the hydrogen's carbonate ion. This one. The hydrogen carbonate ions will react with the extra hydrogen ion from the acid. Why it can do that? Because the amount of salt is large. So it can react with the uh, hydrogen ion. So we know that after this reaction, the H plus is no more. Means the pH of the solution it won't really change much. If let's say the hydroxide now added, extra hydroxide added or alkalines added, so which species is going to react? Of course, the acid needs to react. The carbonic acid will react with the hydroxide to form the water and the salt. So the salt is the hydrogen carbonate ion, of course. So means this is uh this this is to remove the hydroxides, and hydroxide when it's no more, the pH also will not change. Uh, that's how the the buffers equations to form. Always need to involve the buffer species again. Uh, the buffer species in this question is hydrogen's carbonate ion and the carbonic acid. Part 3. The hydrogen carbonate concentration and the carbonic acid concentration, the ratio is given. So it's 14.1. So later we're going to use that for calculation. Uh, calculates the pH of this sample, uh, means this, uh, this seawater. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is uh, need to construct the Ka expression. Uh, try to just involve the acid and salt and the, uh, of course the hydrogen ion. So the acid okay, is ionized from the salt and the H+. So this is the buffer actually uh, without the water. Just now the this buffer it has water, right? Water and the hydronium. Actually, uh, you can just cancel out the H2O, right? So here also, so remains the the H plus here. So let's say now we use this uh, this uh, simplify buffer equation. Um, so uh, Ka is the concentration of the products over the concentration of reactant. Product is a salt and H plus, and the reactant is the acid. So you get this expression because the ratio of the salt and acid is given. So we rearrange this Ka expression. So salt over acid. So we just need to bring this one to another side. So we'll get this, uh, this uh, new uh, expression. So we know that this one is the 14.1. Uh, Ka we can find from the the question means the this this value. After that we can get the concentration of H plus. So how to get Ka? Uh, so we need to use a pKa. pKa given is six point three five. We know that pKa equal to negative log Ka. So Ka is equal to ten power of negative six point three five. So you get this value. So once you get this Ka, substitute this Ka into this uh, expression, right? So then you get the concentration of the hydrogen ion, which is 3.168 times 10 power of negative 8. Negative log this one, so you get 
7.5. So therefore, the pH of this seawater now is 7.5. Okay, I hope you understand. Thank you.